He's at the beach. Yeah, at the beach. Oh, that must be called him to get some help with getting it zoomed in. Yeah, he's good. Does he play today? I don't want that big old thing in my room. I just wanted something small that I could connect. And the beaches are supposed to play campus. I didn't know that. It started in about one minute. <coughs> Hi Jane. Hi. Hi Jane. Hi Jane. Hey. Good morning, everyone. Morning. Good 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 morning. Hi Jane. <coughs> morning. Hi Hoover. Good morning. Good morning, morning Orlotta. Who's that? Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Up to 50 participants. Mm -hmm. 50 participants, she said. I'm going to be the 50. I heard Steve say we just hit 50 participants. Well, as soon as the, the father flowers die, I'll put the pansies in. I've got them. Okay. Probably next week. Don't have to rush. Yeah, they're sitting in my yard. I need to plant them. They need to get bigger before we get really, really cold. <laughs> All right, y'all. We're going to um, get started this morning. Um, we are especially privileged this morning to uh, welcome to uh, Worship on this All Saints Sunday, Me Mullen. She is no stranger to Piney. She has preached here before. She has come through in the clutch um, when I've had to be away. She currently serves as the Director of Justice, Reconciliation, and Creation Care for the Presiding Bishop's Office for the National Episcopal Church. Um, and before that, she was a priest at St. Paul of Richmond. And in a former life, she worked in nonprofit management and politics. Um, she got her undergrad from the University of North Carolina, for which I will forgive her. Um, <laughs> she graduated at Clark Atlanta and at uh, Virginia Seminary. Um, and so we're thrilled to welcome her on this All Saints, as also the day in which we gather up and offer prayers for your pledges of. Um, Financial pledges for 2021. We have some special music this morning. Our prelude um, will be led by none other than the great Troy Peterson. So I invite everyone to take some deep inhalations and breathe out. And let us begin worship. Beautiful. 
Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory to God forever and ever. Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Eternal God, you have always taken people of every nation, age, and color, and made them saints. Like them, transformed, like them, baptized in Jesus' name, take us to share your glory, where you reign one God forever and ever. Amen. See what kind of love the Father has given to us and what we should be called God's children and that it is what we are. Because the world didn't recognize him, it doesn't recognize us. Dear friends, now we are God's children and it hasn't yet appeared what we will be. We know what when, that when he appears, we will be like him because we'll see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves even as, pu even as he is pure. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray responsively Psalm 34 verses one through 10 and 22. I will bless God at all times and praise shall ever be in my mouth. I will glory in the most high. Let the humble hear and rejoice. Proclaim with me the greatness of God. Let us exalt God's name together. I sought and God answered me and delivered me out of all my terror. Look upon the most high and be radiant and let not your faces be ashamed. I called in my affliction and God heard me and saved me from all my troubles. The angels encompass those who fear God, and God will deliver them. Taste and see that God is good. Happy are they who trust in the Most High. Fear the Most High, you that are God's saints. For those who fear God lack nothing. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek God lack nothing that is good. O oh God, you will ransom the life of your servants, and none will be punished who trust in you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When Mary arrived where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. When Jesus saw her crying and the Jews who had come with her crying also, he was deeply disturbed and troubled. He asked, where have you laid him? They replied, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to cry. The Jews said, see how much he loved him. But some of them said he healed the eyes of the man born blind. Couldn't he have kept Lazarus from dying? Jesus was deeply disturbed again when he came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone covered the entrance. Jesus said, remove the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man said, Lord, the smell will be awful. He's been dead four days. Jesus replied, didn't I tell you that if you believe, you will see God's glory? So they removed the stone. Jesus looked up and said, Father, thank you for hearing me. I know you always hear me. I say this for the benefit of the crowd standing here so that they will believe that you sent me. Having said this, Jesus shouted with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his feet bound and his hands tied and his face covered with a cloth. Jesus said to them, untie him and let him go. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. 
May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Well, it's good to see you, St. Paul's, once again. I feel like every time I see you, there are some strange and extenuating circumstances. I think the last time there was a flight delay and running from the airport. But I know you to be a community that adapts well to rain, to being out of the building, to all kinds of circumstances, which is why I think you perhaps are really well equipped for this very strange way to celebrate a very strange holiday. This day that we commemorate all the saints, all the hallowed. It's a strange thing to commemorate and it's a strange time to think about it. There's a way in which there are plenty of things and people to lift up. I know that we've all had losses, personal and communal. We've had them in our churches and in our families. There are a thousand people alone in Southern Maryland that have died of COVID in the last few months. We've all had fears that feel like grief and loss. There's plenty of people who are rumbling in the tummy or can't sleep at night, worried about the future of our country, the racial reckoning that we face. What's gonna happen? That's a type of grief, a type of loss. And we all look with dismay and confusion. What will happen in the holidays and in the Thanksgiving and Christmas to come? Another type of grief and loss. It's like we're living in a big, dark cave. You can almost feel it, can't you? The walls around us, the stone locking us in squinting really hard to make out anything. And if a shaft of light comes, it blinds the eyes. That's what grief does. It's a wild ride. And yet it's just our work. It's church work to make something out of it, to do something with all of this loss. I heard once that what church people do is the one thing no one else can. When we think about saints, we make holy the life, the story of their life. There's this idea that when you love and care for someone, the one precious gift you can give them before they die is to make sure they know that their story matters to God. How they matter into God's story, how God cares for them and came close to them and wove them into the work sort of the, the essence of what we think about when we honor a saint. And we've been doing this as a church for a long, long time. This is the second oldest holiday we've got, right around the same time as Christmas. 411 in Eastern Syria, the very early Christians, after they had Easter, set up this day to remind each other of the holiness of the stories of those who they loved how they were woven into the story of God's work and life. And they use the word in Greek, they use the word hagios. Hagios, it's literally an adjective, it could be used as a noun and it means holy things, holy people. But when they call someone a saint, they call someone hagios. It says also that they have this, um, this breath, the wind of God has come quite near to them, blown around them. Maybe not their whole life, maybe not every moment of it, but something about them has been made special. And it's like in the Old Testament, like in the Hebrew scriptures, things are holy when they're very close to God. You put something on an altar in a temple, it's close to where God is. It's near the hagios breath. Can you imagine that those we've loved, those we've gone on are close to that breath of God. So that's where we, we think theologically when we learned biblical Episcopal people know a saint to be holy. It's not that they're a superhero or even a role model. It's that we can see the holiness coming through in some part of their life. We can see the place 
where God saw their story and saw it to be special. Being a saint is a part of being a gifted person, cradled and loved by God. And so on this day when we honor not just the superheroes of faith, but also the weekday saints, the day-to-day -day saints, we acknowledge how all of them like us were humans, afraid, sometimes living in a dark cave, but balancing out that darkness with letting the breath and light of God blow through the hagios. But yet, yet and still the reality of our lives is like this, this scary cave, this time of reckoning, this time when you feel everything coming undone. And that's what's so beautiful about this gospel story. You've got Mary and Martha running up to Jesus. Yes, they blame him, they shout out. Why couldn't you be here earlier? Why couldn't you have done something? Don't you know we're hurting? And yet, it's what Jesus does in response that I think is the holiness for us. Jesus, he does a lot of things in response to the story. The first thing he does is well, he weeps, cries. He not just has empathy, but there's something about being made aware of the suffering and the pain of others that Jesus wants us to emulate. It's not a fake, oh, I feel your pain, but it's a deep resonance. Ever heard that phrase that mama's only un as happy as her unhappiest child? Or thinking about those who think about disease and community, there's really no way to be healthy when your entire village or town or community is sick. Jesus is sort of living into what that looks like for us, what solidarity is, what friendship is, what family is. When one of the body suffers, we're all suffering. When Mary and Martha weep, Jesus weeps. And yet, Jesus is able to take that work and transform it, not into a sinking down, a complicated grief that kills the soul, not a type of mourning where death wins. Jesus transforms it, takes the weeping and does something else. He starts to ask questions. Where have you laid him? You know, Jesus is pretty smart. I think he knows where the next tomb is, the next cave is. And yet, bringing Mary and Martha in, and bringing the mourners in to ask, tell me about this loved one, this past, this history. Do your research, make it plain, tell the story, hold it up. He makes them point out over there, but, but he's been gone a long time. Lazarus has been dead four days. This is how we feel about it. It's not just a simple question. It's the start of Jesus bringing people in. Jesus makes these people, Mary, Martha, the lovers of Lazarus, do the work that angels do. They literally do the things that holy servants of God do in other parts of the Bible. He tells them, move the stone. Something about Jesus' indication that a weeping sister, sad cousin, a mourning neighbor can lift up and remember their loved one, can do the work with God, sort of indicates that, yes, that holy angelic work is not just for superheroes or the super divine, it's for anyone, even someone who lives in a village even a simple one that's crying and missing their loved one. Can you imagine any of us has the capacity to do the holy work of resurrection with God? Mary, she couldn't have been that big or that strong. Martha, who was always complaining about her sister, they were able to put their work aside, to move the stone, to set up the day of pre-resurrection for Jesus. And then Jesus did this other thing. He shouts out with a loud voice, come out. 
and makes the community be the people to set him free, to unbind him, to take off these stinky, rotten cloths of death. Death and darkness in a cave, they sort of have that effect visually. I could see them, I could smell them. The way they bound Lazarus, they covered his eyes, they held his hands. And yet it's up to us, the living, to unbind the memories, the holiness of our saints, to let them go. It's up to us to point to where they've laid and to free them. We can be those who do what Jesus asked when we're in deep grief and mourning about the things we've lost. How can we point to them? Remove that stone, unbind them and let them go. Is it enough on this day of remembering, this day of sacred mourning, just to ring a bell or light a candle and be done? No, I know it's not. It's not ever really enough when you want to remember the way someone's trod, their holy walk, the bits of places where they were enlightened, when you want to call out their name. And yet, these are the holy pieces of start. These are the places where we begin or take up the unfinished work, where we unbind the memory of those who have walked through our neighborhood, through our town, our matriarchs and patriarchs, or just the fallible, normal parents we miss. Unbinding them, letting all of us finally grieve honestly is the salve to the wound. There is something diabolical about a culture that doesn't let people grieve properly, that says you're weak if you're scared or sad. Instead of saying, we honor the pain and the struggle with loyalty. We honor the sacredness of all that was in this life. It's the way we treat one another. It's the way we treat our communities. It's the way God treats us, honoring us, holding us through our ups and downs. So the times when we're wanting to hug each other and get along and have a picnic and the times when we just don't understand, when we're at loggers heads, when we're afraid of what might happen after the election, the whole us that we can free from the stench of death, the stinky bedrolls, the things that bind us. And remember, there is a place in which God came very close, breathing in the wind of Hagios, the beautifulness, the holiness. When Jesus told Mary and Martha and those around them to do the work, to come close to the thing that was scary and dead into the cave and let it go. They were doing their own weekday saint work, their own holiness work. They were doing it with bravery and they were doing it in a way that helped put death to its end. It wasn't just Jesus alone in this resurrection that made death no more, but all of death's extended family, sin, racism, sexism, pain, forgiveness, we can all help take that sting out and honor the resurrection moment that Jesus had. Come out, Jesus said in this loud voice. I imagine that this story, this pre-rehearsal to the great Easter moment was meant not just to show us how fantastic Jesus is, and Jesus is fantastic, but also to remind us, to get us ready, that we don't have to be afraid. We can walk into the dark cave. We can face the place where we might have turned away from the morning, told ourselves we can't cry or be afraid, cut off our neighbors or not asked, where have you laid them? We can help unbind them, move that stone, because God is with us, calling us 
And God will one day call each and every one of us. Can you hear your own name in your own moments when you're a little less hagios and a little more in darkness? Holly, come out. Thelma, come out. Steve, Maria, Deborah, are you ready to come out? I imagine Fern and even Melanie, when you hear Jesus calling, out of that grave, can you imagine walking into the light and with the community of all the saints who've gone before us, unwrapping and unbinding you from everything that causes fear and hurt and confusion, unbinding you and taking off the stink of death and pain and the bedclothes of hurt, knowing that there is more, there is life, there is hope, and we celebrate it with all of those saints who loved us, who cared for us as we loved and cared for them. Unbind us and let us go. And may all God's people and the communion of saints say amen forever. Amen. 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 With clean hearts and a pure faith, let us ascend the hill of the Lord, offering our prayers and thanksgivings to the one who hears our petitions and answers our call, responding, hear us, O host of heaven. Mike, unmute yourself, please. Thanks. Helpful. Helpful, is it not? Yes. In thanksgiving for many peoples, languages, tribes, and nations, whose diversity of thought and action become blessings to all who seek the fullness of God's presence in the midst of daily life. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for All Saints Church Chevy Chase. All Saints Preschool, Chevy Chase, All Saints Parish, Oakley, and All Saints, All Souls Parish, D.C. Hear us, heaven. For the commitment and strength to share God's blessings throughout the world, honoring those who hunger and thirst, who mourn, and who live in fear and anxiety, giving out of our weakness to fill the hopes of others, let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O host of heaven. For the peacemakers who proclaim justice in the marketplace and petition prime ministers, presidents, and legislators to turn the ways of war into the dividends of peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O host of heaven. For those who volunteer their time to enlighten the lives of others, especially those who work in our schools, recreational centers, and wherever young people seek enrichment and encouragement. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, a host of heaven. For holy women and men who have died in the light of Christ, including Lois Keach, Marianne Litz, Wanda Truitt, Una Abu Bakar, June Chapley, Edward Webster, Jean Judd, and Barbara Lee Simpson, and all those whose righteousness inspired the faithful of every generation. May their souls and the souls of unsung heroes in every age enter the gates of paradise. Hear us, O host of heaven. In companionship with the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, we continue the offering of our prayers. For peace in the midst of the election, equal access. For those who struggle with 
anxiety and depression. We remember the great ancestors of our faith from Abraham to Sarah, to Paul and Phoebe. Ancestors of the faith, we remember you. We remember the prophets and priests, the ministers and teachers who have taught us the way of God. Teachers of the faith, faith we, we remember, remember you. you. We remember our grandparents and parents, aunts and uncles, those who have gone before us in our lifetime. Family, Family of our family. faith, we remember you. We lift up the memories of children and grandchildren, brothers and sisters, husbands and wives and parents whose lives ended too soon. Those close in our heart, we remember you. We lift up to you, O oh God, the names of those we have lost in this past year from our lives, knowing that they are with your heart forever. As we read these names, we will pause after every name to remember, pray, and give thanks for their lives. We have lit candles in honor and in memory of each person whose name we will now recite. Muna Abu Bakar. Margaret Sealer Bowie. Carol Lee Hamilton. Julia Briscoe Hawkins. Hollis. Arrington Height, <laughs> Elaine Louise Hoffman, <laughs> Annie May Howard, <laughs> Rita Janelle, Harry Ann Katsouris. Lois Hamilton Keach. Mary Ann Litz. Paul Michael Miller. Mary Ann Pearson. Maud Houston Pinckney. Nellie Elizabeth Roby. Walter Wesley Hoffman. <laughs> J. Arthur Rotier. <laughs> Patricia Safel. Kinsley Reese Sandvik. Barbara Lee Simpson.
Janice Margaret Spots. Donald Horace Spreggins. Luet P. Strickler. Candido Valentin. Edward Bernard Webster. Donald Ellsworth Wilson. Carlos Alexander Mason. We celebrate the lives of those we have named, O oh God, and lift up many more names in our hearts. Family of God, we remember you and we honor you. We know you are with us in the spirit of worship and you will not be forgotten. We give thanks, O oh God, for all who have gone on to join you beyond this life. We trust in the hope of resurrection and the promise of new life in Christ. And know that in our grief and in our celebration, O oh God, you are with us through it all. And we are not left alone. In the name of Christ, in whom love lives forever, we pray. Amen. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. 
sorry and we repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. God the Father, God the Son, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. By the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Friends, I invite you to unmute yourselves. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace, everyone. Peace, peace, everyone. Peace, everyone. Peace, 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 Troy, you did a magnificent job. Thank you. Certainly did. Mm -hmm. Thank you again to Mother Melanie for her word of Thank hope you. and encouragement. Um, is anyone celebrating a birthday or an anniversary this week? Or just celebrated one perhaps yesterday. <laughs> that would be me. <laughs> I missed it last week. Deanna, I have a birthday this week. I have a birthday this week as well. This is Michelle. This is Deanna. I have a birthday. Hi, Michelle. Also. All right. So we've got Thank Michelle. You. Troy, you celebrated a birthday yesterday, right? I mean, Grant. Hi. Grant, yeah. And uh, Russ celebrated a birthday yesterday. Uh, our Deacon Steve has a birthday on Wednesday. Anyone else? My computer's gone a little in and out with the internet, so I'm Tuesday. Not late. Deanna Gerhardt. Deanna. Okay. All right. So um, as per our tradition, I invite everyone to join us in our prayer for those celebrating a birthday, loud and cacophonous as though it may be, so everyone can hear their blessing. Oh God, our times, our times are in your hands. Look with favor and on your service in another year. And that they may grow with good grace and grace. Thank you to them your goodness and your life. Jesus Christ, the Lord, our Lord. Amen. All right, let's see who's first up on my screen. Deacon Steve. Deacon Steve is here in person. 20 feet away from me. Actually, probably <laughs> the, <laughs> the blessing of God Almighty. The blessing of God Almighty. Son, Father, Son, Spirit, Son, be with you this year. Filling you with peace, joy, and hope. Amen. All right. All right, Michelle. who else is that? Michelle. Michelle, the blessing of God, Michelle, the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you, filling you with good health, joy, and abundance. This year. Amen. All right, Russ. All right, Russ. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you, filling you with joy and wonder this year. Amen. Amen. Um, Deanna. Deanna, I'm Deanna. Deanna, I'm looking for Deanna. There she is. Deanna, Deanna, I don't see you. Hold on, I'm going to find you. Like I said, i am got a little bit of internet issues. Is Deanna on here? Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> okay, have no fear, I will find you. Yeah, the, the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, fill you with good health, peace, and joy this year. Amen. Amen. Steve, they're asking, oh, maybe I, I think actually I need to you. Um, well, Grant, hey, Grant, tell everyone how old you are. I'm 11 as of yesterday. And how does 11 feel? The same. The same. <laughs> Such a letdown. The same. But did you have a good day? 
Yeah, I got to jump on my friend's trampoline and close my best friend's sister. Cool. Well, here is your blessing. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit fill you with joy, delight, and lots of safe, happy adventures this year. Amen. 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 All right, folks, announcements for uh, this week. Uh, the um, funeral for Lois Keach, as, as was in the midweek, is this Wednesday. It is private because of COVID restrictions. However, the, you are invited to greet the funeral procession as we come from the funeral home to the church cemetery. We should be there till 12 to 12, 15-ish. Um, please park every other car, um, but you are allowed to be there. And I know that would mean a lot to the family and a fitting tribute to Lois Keach, who spent her entire life um, in this parish. Please continue to keep the Keach and the Hamilton and the Thompson families in your prayers. Um, on Wednesday evening after the election, of which I hope all of you have voted or will, we will have Compline at 8 p.m. Um, and then morning prayer on Friday, community morning prayer uh, with multiple other churches in our whole region, Virginia, Maryland, NBC, at um, 8 a.m. led by Sewell. Um, and again, I have to plug that. If you haven't done morning prayer, it's a really, uh, it's just neat. That's a really great. <clears throat> um, and so is Compline at 8 p.m. Um, also next Sunday, we're gonna try this outdoor thing again. As of right now, it's supposed to be 70. We all know that could change, but you never know. Um, and we'll be graced with some special music then if the weather holds up as well. Um, we are collecting peanut butter and jelly and crackers for our backpacks. You can leave them under the bench at the front of the church. Someone will get them um, throughout the week. Uh, you can also help pack the backpacks on Thursday mornings at 9 a.m. Uh, if you're interested, contact Vicki Mumford, uh, Joy Schofield, or Kathy Fernandley. And yes, I cannot forget this today, actually after this service at 11, you're invited to worship at the cathedral where Bishop Curry will be preaching. And then also at four, Bishop Curry, along with several other religious leaders from various denominations and faiths will gather uh, um, for a service of prayer, of hope and healing um, in the midst of the turmoil that we're facing as a nation, as people's anxiety is high with the upcoming election that's at four, go to cathedral.org and you will see the link for that service. Glorious music, um, meaningful prayers. So I hope that you will participate in that. Um, we're hosting safe nights in two weeks, not at the church, but we will be providing dinners and lunch. Um, there's a sign up in the midweek email for the lunches. There'll be another one in this coming e week email for dinner. Um, and thanks to your donations, we raised over $8,000, which is well past our goal. So we're able to sponsor oh, two and a half wow. weeks of housing for um, 25 people um, at our local motel during this tumultuous time. So thanks to all of you uh, for that. Um, I'm pretty oh, sure I'm something else. Question. Oh, Debbie Brown wants to say something. Debbie. Yeah, I just wanted to talk about that. Um, we still have some slots left in the lunches, not very many. It's filling up very quickly. Also, we don't have to provide dinner for each of those 14 nights. We have to provide dinner on Sunday, which is already covered. And then we have Tuesday and Wednesday. So the sign up, that sign up will be for families who might want to work together to provide 25 individually um, packaged dinners for, for those two days. So look for that, please. Thank you. Um, anything else? Are we having noonday prayers on Wednesday? We're not going to have noonday prayer because of the service, the funeral. Oh, okay. Got you. Um, is that Ife or Femi? One of y'all waving? Or are you just waving to wave? Or do you have an announcement? Just waving to wave. We're good. Okay. Um, at this time, we're going to have our dedication of our pledges. Thank you to those who've mailed them in, completed them online. If you're still discerning your pledge uh, for 2021, thank you for being so thoughtful and prayerful um, about it. And we invite you to mail it in or submit online. Um, the Finance Committee will be getting together at the end of November 
after Thanksgiving to start working on um, next year's budget. And again, thank you to everyone because we know this is a stressful time for many people. It's an uncertain time um, and your faithfulness and commitment and giving to this parish so that we can do God's work in our community, so that we can nurture one another um, is a blessing and it's a gift and it's nothing which any of us in leadership at this parish take for granted. At this time, let us dedicate our hearts and our intentions for 2021's giving. The Lord be with you. Oh, oh, mute. I love you guys, but mute yourselves. And also with you. <laughs> let us pray. Midwife of beauty, composer of life, thank you for the gift of life and the goodness of creation that sustains and delights us. With grateful hearts, we dedicate our gifts to you. Great Redeemer, generous sovereign, thank you for the gift of salvation and the hope of healing that forgives and frees us. With grateful hearts, we offer our lives to you. Flame of holy desire, fount of every blessing, thank you for every gift that unites and inspires the church to share the abundance of your grace to the world with the saints and angels above and with every creature here below, we sing our praise and shout for joy. Alleluia. Amen. In honor of All Saints Day, we will sing a parish beloved. Uh, it's a little blurry, but you can do it. We're going to sing verses one and two of For All the Saints. Remain muted, but sing loudly and joyfully. You all know this. Receive now the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and always, no matter what. Amen. Let us go forth rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. All right. Uh, you're welcome to stay for coffee hour.